He was a septic patient. She, she, uh, she was her heart rate was up near 200, um, and we uh, we started as Malal on her. Apparently, do y'all know any research or can y'all talk about that for just a second? So the question is, is Malal and sepsis? Well, just the yeast of and How about adding nitroglycerin? So, ironically, there's some data that it helps. Yeah, there is. I mean, it, this is like way early. We're not, like, I don't think this is like standard practice. You have to be putting beta blockers on your, um, on your uh, uh, septic patient, your septic shock patients, but... Um, what, just out of curiosity though, the rate 200, what was that SVT or what? The patient initially came into C4, this is a patient that initial rates uh, sinus in the 140s, 30 minutes later it's in the 150s, 20 minutes later it's in the 160s, over the next 20 minutes it's in the 190s, uh, and I told Forrest at some point that's going to become something that's not sinus. Because at, at fifty, at fifty-five years old, yeah, yeah, he wasn't just ignoring the patient, but you know, at a fifty-five-year-old, you know, cancer patient or whatever she was with sepsis, neutropenic patient, like at some point, you know, you needed to do something. Her pressure was holding steady, but the heart rate was starting to get somewhat concerning over the first ninety minutes, and so that's how the patient ended up on an Esmolol drip. Yeah. What, what did he do? What, what did you do? Just curious. While the rate was going up, uh, well, I was just giving her fluid. I think I gave her a total of three liters uh, in a course of it was like an hour, hour and a half. Wow. Um, uh, so we it should also be mentioned that I think uh, we gave her some just empiric coverage, uh, vancomycin, and it was almost like she had. Uh, a gram negative um, cytokine reaction just after the antibiotics because her, her heart rate went up, her temperature went up. How long after the antibiotics did that happen? Probably about 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah so, so far, it's just because you use the word cytokine doesn't mean we're going to let you off the hook for um... <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said interleukin. Oh, good job, Faris. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, was it three or six? Or? Yeah, I think it's six, actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, so fluids, uh, really early antibiotics. We gave her Tylenol for her temperature, but it was just all the, her, her rate was just completely uh, unresponsive to anything we did. It kept going up. But, uh, it got, it, I mean, I think it got up to 200, honestly, son. So it was. I, I have no problem with the application of asthma wall in this case. The, um, uh, in terms of routine administration of beta blockers in your septic patients, I don't think we're there yet, but there's an intriguing study out there. I don't remember all the details of the study, so I'm reluctant to venture off into that too much. But I remember thinking to myself, this is cool. This, you know, we'll see what comes down the, down the, down the pipe. Uh, in terms of this particular patient with a heart rate as high as it was, um, highly likely that it's not sinus. All right, Highly likely that it's not sinus if it's getting that high. So uh, if it is a dysrhythmia, in the face of sepsis, it's unlikely to respond to your standard cardioversion techniques like electrical or chemical cardioversion because there's an irritant there. So you have to actually treat the cause. All right, in this case, we got to treat the sepsis. Right, treat the fever. Make sure they're not uh, anemic. All right, so fluid bolus is, is fine. Uh, check their electrolytes. Make sure that those are fine. Um, and uh, once you get them fluid loaded. Uh, as you know, I, this I'm assuming is a stable patient. I guess it was, but with 90 minutes, um, you know, then I, I start thinking about rate control. What's my target on rate control? Try to get them under 150, because once you treat the cause, then the heart rate's going to come back down. All right. So also remember the heart, the, ba the body is a lot smarter than we are. Sometimes they're tachycardic for a reason. So we're not going to just treat a number to get them under 100 because. Books, that's sure. This isn't a one night like dysrhythmia, though. If it's slow, it's hard to 200. One, no, I know, I know, but for it to slowly track up from 140 to 160, 180 to 190 to 200, dysrhythmia would normally be 130, 200. You wouldn't have beat to beat variability. You would have a, you know, there, there are other things to look at. And this, from what we're told here, wasn't, I, I agree with you that you would think it would be something other than sinus. However, the way this trended up sounds like sinus. Yeah, it's just sinus. It was, yeah, and so I agree was, with as unbelievable as it sounds, it was. So they had a, a 200 rate sinus. 
for it, like it wasn't a sustained. I'd like to see the ECG myself. We got it. Yeah, 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 yeah like I see it some time. Because yeah, it's yeah, a 50-year-old patient. I mean, you know. it's very 25 monsters. Yeah, I mean, it, it might degenerate. Were they were they getting any any stimulants of any sort, beta agonists or anything? I'm sorry. Were they getting any stimulant like albuterol or anything like that? No. Horace was giving. So even even if even if the question stands of can't is beta blockade beneficial in septic folks there is very early studies in the critical care literature that that it may have a positive effect so part of the question about sepsis is there's both the damage that happens directly from infection where you know it wrecks your kidneys or whatever but there's also the body's immune response to that infection and if that response is too strong sometimes people die and so there's questions of things like steroids beta blockade things like that that may blunt the body's uh, response to an infection if that response is, is too strong. It is incredibly early. This might be something that happens later, and I think that it almost always is going to have more play in the ICU than the emergency department, unless they're there for a long time. Because we have to resuscitate to get them to the point of where they're going to tolerate beta blockade to lower their heart rate. And then the question of 12 hours after you showed up to the ER, is it a good idea to lower heart rate if it's in the 160s? and they're adequately volume resuscitated, maybe in select folks, but it's just honestly way too early. We need a lot more data before we, before we change practice on that.